What's up guys? So today I'm going to talk about the lenses that I currently have, the ones I use the most, and uh, possibly the ones I'm going to get rid of here soon because they don't get used at all. So let's get started. I'm going to push these out real quick. All right, so when it comes to photography or cinematography, the camera is the first choice. Now the lens that you put onto that camera is the second choice. So my cameras again are the Canon 1DX Mark II, the Sony A7S II, the Blackmagic Ursa, the Canon 70D, the Blackmagic 4K production camera, and the Canon C100 Mark I. So as I go through these lenses, I've collected these throughout the years. I've had some, I sold some, I bought some, and I sold some more. So my lens of choice might be completely different from yours because of the line of work. Uh, I shifted from a lot of corporate work to film work, back to corporate, and then marketing on the web. Again, these are just my lenses that I use currently. There definitely are better lenses out there to use. Some of these lenses I'm actually going to trade off or sell off so I can buy new lenses. So first off, let's talk about cinema lenses. So when I first started getting into cinematography, I had a Black Magic, uh, the 4K production camera. Let's see if we can get it real quick. Oh, I found it. All right, so this thing's collecting dust. This thing is my first, basically, uh, cinema camera that I ever purchased. And I got it for $3,000 a few years ago. I mean, holy cow, maybe four years ago, I don't remember. Anyways, um, I, wa I really wanted manual aperture lenses. So I started looking to the Rokinet lenses because I didn't want autofocus. I wanted to make sure that I pulled focus on my own. And I just heard nothing but good news about the, uh, the Rokinet cinema lenses. So with that said, I bought the entire line. The Rokinon 35mm 1.5. These babies are so smooth to, to focus as well as to change the aperture. It is declicked. This I would say is probably my, one of my favorite lenses. The 35mm in a full frame or even a Super 35, I feel is a great length. And it gives you superior picture quality. I love this baby. This one's always on my camera if I'm shooting cinema. Next is the 24 millimeter 1.5. This one a lot of people use on their FS7, the FS5, uh, the cinema cameras like the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro, uh, Mini, Ursa, 4K, you name it, they use these two. Either 24 because it has a good link to it. That's what she said. <laughs> or the 35. The 14 millimeter 3.1. I use this mainly for wide angled shots. It does run a little soft, so I use this just occasionally mainly for landscape. Here's the fisheye, eight millimeter, 3.8. If you really want that get everything in the room kind of look, you can fix the fisheye in post, but if you like this look, I mean, it's, it's a great lens to have. Here's 85 millimeter, 1.5. This baby is great if you got, you gotta make sure these are on tripods too, because there is no IS on this. If you're looking for image stabilization in these lenses, they don't have it. Just keep that in mind. But. 85 millimeter, this is a great lens. Uh, gives you great bokeh. I mean, uh, if you're looking to maybe interview somebody uh, and you just want like a medium close up shot uh, with a great blurred background, amazing lens to use. The 24 to 105 Canon L lens. This has done so much work. This has made so much money for me. This thing, I mean, you can, it's getting loose a little bit, but I, this is, the oldest lens that I have, this has been with me since the beginning, and it'll probably be with me until this thing breaks down. I absolutely love this for a video lens. It takes great photos too, but it has the image stabilizer on it. Autofocus is great on here, it's on point. Actually, every camera I have, this has been on it, from the A7S II, to the 70D, to the 1DX Mark II, to the Canon C100 FS5. Every camera that I've owned, this has been on there, and this has given me amazing quality. Again, if, if you're looking for a, an L lens that's zoomed, if you want something with IS, get the 24 to 105 if you're shooting video. This thing is amazing. All right, the Canon 70 to 200 millimeter. This is the L lens as well. Now, unfortunately, this does not have IS. I purchased this, uh, I think, from somebody on Craigslist for really cheap, I think like $300. And um, I tell you, what, I hardly use it because it doesn't have IS. Listen, let me tell you something. Uh, when it comes to the zoom lenses, especially something that goes out to 200, and you're shooting video, um, you have to rely on a tripod for this. If not, you're gonna get some shaky footage. 
like really shaky. And as many of you guys know, I do a lot of freehand shots. So this Harley comes out, unfortunately, this is, but this has such a super sharp image. I use this for interviewing. This thing's on a tripod. This is the sharpest lens I would say that I have. I mean, this is really sharp, but this, this doesn't cut. I mean, this thing is beautiful. This makes, this right here, I will be, I'll probably be keeping it. Maybe I'll do a giveaway, I don't know. But I will be upgrading this to the 2.8 version, absolutely, because I need that IS, and to have the extra stops too helps, uh, for especially for indoor shooting. All right, who has not purchased one of these? If you haven't, just go out and get it. Yes, it's cheap. This, they call this the Fantastic Plastic. The 50 millimeter Canon EF lens, the 1.8. This baby only costs you $125 brand new. You can probably get this for like 60 or $70 used somewhere. I mean, the quality that comes out of this cheap plastic lens is superb. Yes, it doesn't have a nice focus ring, uh, but you get what you paid for in terms of the build. However, you get amazing, superb value from the lens. I'm telling you, if you're out there and you just got yourself a Canon 70D or if you want to get yourself started with a, a second lens compared to your kit lens, just get this. Don't even think about it. Your pictures will come out a thousand times better looking just by using this thing. Not only that, but it also has autofocus and it's quiet too. So if you have an autofocus camera, this one, I still use this. I am. I did have the Canon 1.4 version of this. I sold it because I just, I, I use this mainly for autofocus. I don't pull rack on this, but I will be getting the 1.2 version L lens for photography and also just for some video shoots as well. Another cheapo lens that a lot of you may not even know about. All right, this is the 35 millimeter. This is another, this is, I would say another fantastic plastic that a lot of people don't know. It's not Canon brand. This is actually a, I'm gonna botch this as well. Yang No. This is a 35 millimeter EF lens. This is an amazing value for it. Uh, yes, the, this one thing about this, this, this lens is, it's not as sharp, of course, as some of the Canon lines, but it still delivers really good quality with a very extreme low. I mean, this thing is 1.2. 35 millimeter. I bought this for $60 and B&H that was used. And I think you can purchase a new for like $90 something like that. Again, I wouldn't use this for a professional gig, but if you're shooting YouTube or if you're shooting something on your own, or if you, like, you know, you're going to be in a low, low light situation and you need something with a 1.2 to 35 millimeter, this thing is your baby. I'll leave the link for this below. You should have this in your arsenal. Anyway, $60 used like 90 bucks brand new. Just freaking have it in the arsenal just for one of your cheap, fantastic plastic getups. This is the Sony 50mm 1.8 FE. Now I use this primarily on my Sony A7S II. Um, I got rid of many of my Sony lenses because I got rid of my Sony FS5. However, I still have my A7S II and I use this for it. Um, I, I probably get rid of this as well. I still use the Metabones EF to E mount Speed Booster Ultra Metabones adapter for the A7S II. And I use this mainly because I use the EF lenses on the Sony as well. Hence the reason why I'm getting rid of this and trickling, just keeping Canon lenses for the majority of my cameras. And of course, I do have a 17 to 50 millimeter Sigma 2.8 lens attached to my 1DX Mark II, which I'm filming on right now. This lens, again, it's it's a superb lens that I've had for about three or four years, and it gets the job done. The autofocus is loud on it though, but it's it still delivers a great image. I will be getting rid of this one so that way I can have the 16 to 35 Canon L lens, the 2.8 or the 4.0 version. I'm not sure yet. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. I just wanted to share with you the lenses I currently use. I hope you like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know which one is your favorite lens or which one you would recommend for me for video. All right, guys. So that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you in the next one.